guys, welcome to another training session. Yeah, and today it's about shoulders. I will show you a, a specific intense shoulder training to make sure that your shoulders grow and without any special equipment whatsoever, without any shoulder press machines, without any uh, of that stuff, simply a barbell, um, two light dumbbells for warming up and that's basically it. So I'm still a bit tired from um, the kettlebell session and also my shoulders haven't recovered fully but it's been about a week since I last trained them so it's absolutely fine to do it now again. And the first thing we really do guys is simply warming up. So I always start warming up the side delts. They are, by the way, the most important part when it comes to showing your shoulders. So you should focus training these, of course, if you want, really want to make them show. But the front delts are also important uh, for the look of um, your shoulder. And of course, once you turn your back, the rear delts become important. But as a matter of fact, you should always train all three heads of your shoulder muscle um, simply for health reasons and to make sure that you are as strong as possible when it comes to your shoulders so it's warming up the sides now this was or oh, this is now for the front basic warming up exercise you can see that I'm really doing everything in a row without any pause simply because it's a warm-up exercise so you can even go further and do for example something like that which Arnold did for example and this is also then good for warming up the rear delts if you really go up that high you can of course also do bicep curls to warm up your biceps of course and also your front delts because most people really forget how um, much of an effect the bicep curl has the normal bicep curl has for your front delts it's also it's not simply a bicep exercise it's also an exercise for your front delts but since most of the people do pressing work uh, all the time they focus more on the biceps here and not so much on the front delt so basically if you are already pressing a lot overhead or if you are pressing a lot on the bench you're not really that much in need of a bicep curl but when you uh, want to do it for, for cosmetic reasons to make it show then of course you need this so, the first exercise I'm about to do is simply an overhead press. Now, today I have only 30 kg on the bar, so it should be strict presses. Shouldn't be too um, hard for me to strict press it, at least in the beginning. But once I get tired, I will have to push press it. And we will work our way back down until... Um, I basically cannot do 20 kg anymore and then we do another exercise which I will show you then and um, so on and so forth so here we go my first set is of course the strongest so I try to max out as much as possible was my max you saw me of course 
leaning backwards, but that is absolutely normal because the overhead press does not only recruit all your shoulder muscles, but it also recruits all of your back muscles, your glutes and legs. So therefore it's a perfect compound exercise, but in particular a great one for simply training shoulders. This is maybe the single most important exercise for training your overall shoulders, your overall deltoids. And of course, as you can see, it's also uh, increasing my heart rate. So for fat loss, again, a very, very important exercise. I have two iso drinks here, so isotonic drinks and a bottle of water. I think that should be enough for this session. And I will show you at the end how pumped up my shoulders are once we are done with this session. <sighs> Give me a little bit more break. I'm now actually feeling the pump right now, <laughs> simply because I'm, I'm pre tired from all the workouts. But nevertheless, I thought it was time for me to um, do a shoulder session again because I really want to make them bigger as they are, bigger than they are. I think my arms are actually a little bit too big for my shoulders in cosmetic, uh, from the cosmetic side of things, from the looks. And uh, therefore I want them to grow first basically before I start um, making my, my arms themselves bigger. So here comes set number two, which will be of course less, but that's how it goes. <coughs> So only 16, man, I'm already feeling the burn. Oof. Now never mind going up there in repetitions, doing basically supersets, because This is not bodybuilding and if you have a fat layer on your body that is simply big enough then you um, shouldn't be worried about losing energy or losing too much energy for muscle building purposes. That's not the case. Now if you are of course a very slender person you shouldn't do that much of repetitions should then only focus maybe on sets of 8 to 10 repetitions per set. But for me it's not really all about the pump, all about losing fat and all about make the muscles shine and make the muscles grow. And I have the reserve so to speak to go up there. And it's as I said a perfect cardio and you're also using your back muscles Not a bad thing. <laughs> See how I'm getting weaker and weaker? Now this is now the perfect time to take the first plate off. Because remember, we really want to pump them up until they explode. 
or almost explode, not literally, but you want to push it that far. So now we have 20 kg on the bar. So I'm hopefully able to do like five sets, or at least again three sets with decent um, with decent repetitions. This is the primary, the main exercise for this workout. So, therefore you should do as many as you can with these until there's only one plate left on each side. And you feel then that you need to take them off in order to complete the exercise, uh, to fully lock out and do a decent number of reps then you should do other exercises and stop with that. So let's see. Now, oh. now what is of course also sort of an alternative is doing holds at the top. Doing holds at the top until you can't anymore and you have to put the weight down. This is also a great exercise for really pumping it up. But I'm now more focusing on repetitions and there's on isometrics and maybe the very last rep of the very um, very last set will be a max hold so that we finish this exercise then with a good finish so to speak and we are not done yet my friends not by not far not by any means whatsoever yes there's so much to do. I'm really actually thinking about incorporating two other exercises into this shoulder workout because I'm not as fresh as last time when I, when I did it off camera. So therefore I'm really thinking about incorporating two more exercises. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how tired I am. Um, yeah, so you could see at 16 on this one, all be 10 kg lighter, I couldn't make it up to 30. That's really your first, your first set when you're really going all out is really the set that burns uh, the most calories and the most energy. And everything else is simply recruiting what is left, so to speak. Seventeen. Oh. So A little bit more rest gave me one more rep. So two sets now with 20 kg.
13. So four sets. I think the next one should be the last. Because if I cannot make at least 10 repetitions, it's not worth continuing this exercise right here. At least for now. So the last set I think with an isometric, a max hold at the top of the very last rep. So this exercise is obviously painful. That was it in terms of weight and I don't know why but it's always on the left side where the collar sort of gives out <sighs> oh. so that was it for shoulder presses for now as I said now we do Guess what? We're going for bicep curls because we still have some power left in the in this bicep, and uh, before it's gone completely, uh, we have to capitalize on that. Um, there are now two variations of this exercise. Um, well, not really variations, but which both target the front delts. Once it's the bicep curl and then it's simply, well, barbell front raises. Um, let's see how tired I am after doing a couple of sets of bicep curls. Now you can choose any grip you want, the grip you feel the most comfortable. So you see, as with everything, you start very strict and then your form becomes a bit sloppier, but that's okay because it's about the front delts and not about the biceps. So the best thing here is really to do as many repetitions as you can in the set. Try to maintain the form. But if you can't, it's also no problem because the biceps here is already pre-tired due to the shoulder presses we did and it's not the focus of this workout. Um, Oof. <sighs> 
So again, 20, which is great. And I, I took a very, very white shirt this time for this workout session. Simply because I don't want to show my belly all the time. <laughs> But I will show you the effect on the delts after this workout. So I will have to take it off, but show you my shoulders only. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a um, last set of bicep curls, and this time I'm gonna switch it up and do three sets then of front raises with the same weight, just to make it a bit more interesting and show you how many possibilities there are. So here we go for the very last bicep curl set. And by the way, if you're interested in powerlifting, doing more compound movements, albeit with much lower weight, is much, much better than doing isolation work. And uh, isolation work only with, with short, uh, with uh, dumbbells, for example, nothing with barbells, because, sorry, <laughs> because once you want to go back to powerlifting, you still have sort of the same movement pattern within you and you simply need to adjust it to the to the old loads you were using which takes a bit of time of course but you do not lose the uh, motion pattern completely so here we go first set of front raises now i do them norm normally shoulder width apart with dumbbells so I use there for a shoulder with grip and simply do the front raises. Now this is of course heavier because you're taking the bicep here out of the equation. It's more about forearms, core strength, chest and shoulders as it should be. Therefore you're seeing me do much slower repetitions and maybe not as much. Set. So I did the negative quite quickly. That's simply because I want to save energy for for other exercises. I should do the negative, of course, not so quickly compared to the positive, but 
because it's about more about muscle building and less about strength and I want to save energy for the upcoming exercises because we are still not done guys not even after this exercise I did what I did and the beauty about it is that look besides warming up with those 3 kg dumbbells okay everything we did was simply with a barbell and plates attached to it and a mat under it for yeah safety reasons so that's the least everybody should have in their home gym if you want to build a home gym start with a barbell and weights that's the best way to start because you can do so many different exercises you can basically do everything you do with the, with the, uh, with the dumbbell also with the barbell but of course the movement will be slightly different your hand positioning will be slightly different so they are of course not completely the same that, that is why you once train with uh, dumbbells and then with barbells again and sorry that <laughs> this should not have been the case I don't know, was there an earthquake ar around or <laughs> something like that? I don't know sometimes weird stuff happens no where have we been? Have we been here? no Trying to fix the camera. Yeah, that's better. So front raises. Set two. So, set number three. Now we've trained basically the whole rot rotator cuff with the shoulder press, then with the bicep curls and the front raises and the front dance. And now it's about time that we trigger all heads of the shoulder muscle, including the traps. And you know what this means, guys. Mm. This means we're going for the infamous and famous upright row. Now a lot of people say uh, it can cause shoulder injury and it's therefore not a safe exercise. And that's due to the fact that 
you're on the one side rotating in, but when you pull it up, you're sort of rotating out at the same time. And that is true, so it can cause, of course, injuries if you do it too often, if you do it too heavy, for starters. And uh, yeah, basically those two things, if you do it too often and if you do it too heavy for you. But there is, in my eyes, no real alternative for it. Some say, well, do high pulls then. But guess what? High pulls do not really go that much uh, on your traps. And you can, of course, do shrugs, which are also a great exercise. Um, but with shrugs, it's, it's like you need a lot of weight in order for you to make it efficient. And holding that weight the whole time in your hands can be very tiring. So, if you want to do a lot of exercises, different exercises for your shoulder on one day, in one session, shrugs are maybe not the best alternative because you really need a heavy weight in order for shrugs to be effective and efficient. And you need a lot of sets and a lot of repetitions too. So, yeah, maybe the shrugs come very close to the upright row, but I think high pulls do not. So therefore, I think it's, it's really the best exercise for your whole rotator cuff, including the traps, but maybe, or well, obviously, not the best exercise for your joints. Therefore, therefore, we are not doing any fast movements, and we're also not using uh, extremely high weight, because it's simply not needed. And I really like to do it with a close grip, because the wider your grip is, uh, the less you can really activate the traps and the more you activate your lats, which is not what you want. So, you pull it up here and do as many reps as you can. Slowly, but surely. Yeah, another thing I forgot to mention is, yeah, the shrugs are as efficient as the upright row when it comes to the traps, but not so much when it comes to your shoulders. So, actually, the shrug is more isolating for the traps than the upright row, but the combination of isolating the shoulders, including the traps, uh, or with inclusion of the traps is something that makes the upright row special. So at the end, you have to fake it of course a little bit, but that's no problem. And 20 kg is really not dangerous for me guys, on this one. I've been doing that with 40 and 50 kg, at least with 45 I think, for reps. So, that is really an optimal weight for me. And of 
course, once you are all warmed up, the risk for uh, injury is not um, there as if you were to do it as your first exercise, for example. But you see how tiring it is? It is, of course, easier the wider your grip is, but uh, it's also less efficient because it's targeting different muscles then. So the optimal way would be, of course, to use a very close grip, uh, but the close grip is very uncomfortable for me, for my hand joints here in particular. So I do not like the close grip with any kind of exercise, basically. I normally just use a normal grip and sometimes I vary to wider grip um, to make it, well, when it comes to bench pressing harder on myself. Um, for example, or uh, when I try to do some snatch training, because snatching is of course not possible with a close grip, you always need a wide grip to snatch the weight. So when it comes to stuff like that, or when I, for example, want to make my, my barbell row a bit harder, I also use a wider grip. Or simply to make my, my back wider. It's the same with pull-ups. Some people like the neutral grip for pull-ups, but I simply like either the normal grip or the wide grip because I really want to have this, the, this wide back. That is what I'm looking for. Okay, third set now. So that was it for barbell training for now, but we're not done guys, there's still a bit to do and since we are tired right now, we do not need that much of weight. Now it's a bit more isolating. The side delts. I'm not so much focusing on the rear delts because the rear delts are used basically in each pulling movement and they are also used in bench pressing and, and therefore I'm not that much focusing on them right now. But you could of course do for example um, uh, how are they called those lateral raises, rear lateral rear rear lateral raises, I think it's, uh, it's the exercise uh, that I'm talking about, which looks either like this, or like this, or you can even do it behind your, behind your legs, which is even more efficient. And the only machine that can really really build up your rear delts if you're looking for it is the reverse butterfly the best machine for training your rear delts because you're really isolating them in that movement amazing machine okay so now we're doing something as i said for the sides because we want to focus on them and what i'm going to do now is something you probably know, it's called bus drivers, right? So you put a plate of 5kg in front of us and try to imagine that we are steering a bus. And by rotating the plate, you are activating obviously your shoulder muscles, but especially the side of the shoulders. And you do it for the maximum time possible, rest, do another set, and so on. 
Now again, if it's your first exercise, you maybe start with 10 kg. If it's one of your last exercises, then you go down, down in weight. <sighs> see? And once you see that you're starting to lose it, it's better to stop and make a break instead of breaking the floor. That is now something that is isolating the sides, as I said. You could, of course, do normal side laterals too. But this is a bit more special in my eyes because the movement pattern is not similar to side laterals. So I always try to switch up the routine a bit, make it more interesting for myself too, and give my muscles new, new sort of well triggers and make them maybe grow in a faster rate or make them stronger in particular areas where there were still weaknesses because you were doing all the time basically the same movement which we are not right now so I'm grabbing the five again and you already feel it in your second set So this is obviously also a good forearm exercise and a grip exercise as well. We're doing one more set of these and then we're going to do something else. And then again something else and then we're maybe done guys. So you see targeting the specific muscle groups with uh, uh, with different exercises takes a while. Now imagine I wasn't talking to you, but I was still of course needing my rest. Yeah, you can basically say you can kill each muscle group in under an hour of training. Even in 45 minutes, if you're really pushing for it. So if you see guys doing bodybuilding, um, let alone powerlifting for two hours or more, then they're not really doing anything. I mean, with bodybuilding, you have the possibility to train longer because you're not going for max uh, weights and um, you're doing different exercises for different muscle groups and you can uh, choose different type of, uh, type of training splits, like upper and low, or a fiber, a four, a split, whatsoever. Um, by powerlifting, there's basically only three exercises you can do. And even with the long breaks you, you sometimes do between sets, you're not going above an hour. Even with a, with a set of, with a break of five minutes between each set, you're not supposed to go To change it longer than, than an hour because you're, you're only doing three exercises and you're killing your central nervous system basically and if you want to train twice or three times a week you cannot afford to make a two hour training session of powerlifting two or three times a week so that, that's simply not possible at least not if you're not uh, um, on performance performance enhancing drugs then it's simply not possible for your body to recover so yeah, the last set of five. Mm. Oh, the last set of five kg, better said, with five kg. Now you can, of course, twist it a bit harder. Mm. 
the main point is you have to feel it in your side side shoulders <laughs> because you will feel it in your hands and in your forearms but if you don't feel it in your side shoulders you're doing something wrong or this exercise isn't for you now that was of course a very interesting exercise but it's not the last class we're still not done there's still two exercises left in my opinion I need to show you so we won't need any weights anymore that is something I can definitely tell you except for the bar no additional weight needed now before we do our final exercise with the barbell I think you all know what's coming it's the speed bag the speed bag is amazing for building the whole the whole rotator cuff and building shoulder endurance so it's not just something that builds everything and gives you strength but it's especially especially very uh, efficient for building that shoulder endurance because you guys all know it's very hard uh, to do sometimes a set of 10 but going for a set of 30 or 40 or doing max holds is a completely different story and for that you need shoulder endurance now there are of course other exercises you can do with weights but I like this one more I prefer this one before because I here really feel that I'm moving my whole rotator cuff everything is in motion nothing is sticking and it's it's good it's good cardio as well so only benefits and you do not need to make it that flex you can really make it very slowly, especially in the beginning. Don't hesitate. Guys, don't hesitate starting with the speed bag. It's, it's uh, extremely beneficial for your rotator cuff and for your endurance and your whole cardio uh, in general. So what I'm going to perform now is doing well, basically a set of two where I go for my max um, in terms of time um maybe even only once depending on how long this the set actually is and then we move over back to the barbell for the final exercise that's one set <sighs> and I can already see it here that it's really creating this bad blood flow we want in order to build the shoulders so again another tip from me buy a speed bag if you want to create your own home gym So now we go for the second set and I'm making a shorter break once of course for you but also for me to keep the pump.
So, okay. Now, just a little bit of water, not so much. And now we come to the finisher. And what is the finisher, guys? The finisher is upright row, shoulder press. Clean jerk, so to speak. Once that is too hard, we switch over and do bubble curls. To pump the little bit that is still left in us in those steps. Basically it. And if you want to guys, you can even, since I'm in shape right now, even finish everything with side laterals for a maximum set of repetitions. And guys, believe me, if I say, let's take a look at my, my delts. Believe me if I say they are pumped. Just take a look at them. Amazingly pumped. See? Yeah. That was my shoulder workout, guys, for you. I hope you enjoy. Uh, enjoyed the video and hopefully I could give you guys some very valuable tips for switching it up a little bit and doing something for your traps and your shoulders. See you the next time.